Hello, welcome back. You've not done a show for a little while, and uh, we need a special one to uh, to fill that uh, gap here on Zoom. Might be the final one we actually do on Zoom. Things are beginning to return to normal, but a special one. It's a it's a great show, I think. This hopefully, anyway, for nostalgia seekers and even those who can't remember back that far, which I can, but really. Only just, believe me. Uh, Jim McCallion of Sheffield Wednesday, 1960s uh, fame, but also celebrated by fans of several other major clubs. I'm talking Wolverhampton Wanderers. I'm talking Southampton, where he won the FA Cup. Uh, also played uh, for Manchester United as well, another of his clubs. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Alan. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to the show. Uh, aren't we? Aren't we just? And of course, we know from the accent that you're talking to us from north of the border. Where exactly? We live in Fenwick in Ayrshire, Alan. It's about five miles from Kilmarnock and about 20 miles from Glasgow. I I've been in, in Ayrshire now since 2007. And now running a bed and breakfast. We're not going to talk about running a bed and breakfast during this show, but just as a matter of record... record uh, that's what you do these days, you and your, your wife. Yeah, my wife Debbie and, and me, we're on a, 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 an award-winning bed and breakfast in Ayrshire. We, we, we like it, Alan, we've got a passion for it, and it's nice to meet different people. And with the, the airport close by, Prestwick, we, we get a lot of people from all over the world. So, yes, it's very nice. Well, there's your free plug. You've got that out of the way. We'll talk later as well about that wonderful backdrop that you've got with those uh, framed photographs uh, behind you. There's a story there as well. Uh, but really, uh, we, we should kick off with the fact that you're about to become an author after all these years, Jim. You know, your career goes way back, a great career of distinction. You also played, of course, uh, for Scotland. Um, why the book and what's it called? The book is called Wembley Wins, Wembley Wars. Um, I, I've spent time on it. I've been lucky enough uh, in the pandemic to concentrate and put down in what I truly felt um, when I played for all my five professional clubs. Uh, I love football. I have a passion for football, still have. And uh, I thought it was time that I, I opened the box and... Uh, let people know what it was like uh, football in the 60s and the 70s. Um, it, it was up and down, and hence the, the title Wembley wins, Wembley was. Bit of a roller coaster at times, but all in all, fantastic industry. And it was a pleasure and an honour to play for such wonderful football clubs. Well, that uh, title, Wembley Wins, Wembley Woes, brings us really right into the conversation because 10 years apart, two major um, occasions in, in, in your football career, you, you were in two FA Cup finals, one in, in 1966, the other in 1976. And as Sheffield Wednesday fans of a certain vintage will know, the Wembley Woe uh, very much concerns Sheffield Wednesday 2, Everton 3, in 66. We'll talk about Southampton and your Wembley win 10 years later, a little bit further on. But of course, Jim, you scored one of the goals that uh, took uh, Wednesday to Wembley in 66, didn't you? Yes, uh, I think in the, the run up to the final, Alan, I, I scored three goals. Uh, so I was, I was quite happy with that because at Wednesday I, I played a, a kind of deeper lying role at Wednesday which I didn't mind, but I think I was better um, better played uh, closer to the, the, the strikers where I could perhaps get some goals myself and, and lay on quite a few goals. So, But I thoroughly enjoyed my career at Wednesday. Great set of lads at Wednesday. But of course, the, the, the pinnacle was getting to the cup final. We had such a young team. Myself, I was 19 years of age. And um, it, it was such a, a wonderful occasion, but such a sad outcome. And our supporters had, had been to, uh, we were drawn every game uh, away from home. And they had to travel up and down the country 
and it was just so sad we couldn't bring the cup back to the Wednesday supporters. The memory in my mind, as I say, I was quite young then, is of the all-white kit. Now, it, it certainly didn't stay all-white at Villa Park in the semi-final against what was your former club, uh, Chelsea, where you scored, I think, the second uh, Wednesday cup because everybody, but everybody was splattered in mud. In those days, they were. Yes, uh, that, that was obviously conditions you had to play um, whatever because uh, schedules and fixtures had to be sorted out. And, um, you, you know, the picture, uh, Villa Park wasn't the best, but they'd had a lot of rain at, at Villa Park. But I think on the day we were clever and we outfoxed Sheffield Wednesday because Sheffield, uh, not Sheffield Wednesday, Chelsea, because Chelsea kept going through the middle, which wasn't a good ploy, really. And the thing was, we went on the wings more, and that's where our two goals came from. Uh, so I think Alan Brown, um, clever and astute coach that he was, I, I think he definitely put one over in Tommy Doherty, who was the manager of Chelsea at that time. Yeah, Tommy Doherty uh, would have been the manager who, uh, who sold you. Um, I mean, yes, two great was, yeah. just, just on that uh, on that issue, Alan. There, there was quite a bit of uh, talk around um, who would come out the best on the the day. Would it be Peter Osgood, who Tommy Doherty decided to keep, and Jim McCallion, who, who Doherty sold uh, for a British record fee for a teenager? Which one would come out on top um, on the day? And Luckily enough for my good self, uh, we come out top and, and we beat Chelsea 2-0 and I was fortunate enough to get the, the second goal. Yeah, I think it was a back header from memory. You sort of glided it in, uh, didn't you? I mean, we've got pictures from Villa Park that day. You might see them during the show, yeah? Yeah, we uh, growing up in football, that was a thing that uh, was a good habit. And, and what it was, was when the ball's crossed over, uh, when you're going to head it, the, the favourite way to do it is to head it back the way it comes. And that's what I did. Then Peter Benetti, the Chelsea goalkeeper, he was just motionless. He, he, he couldn't do anything because I, I just pushed it over, over his hands into the far corner in there. Yeah, it was a joyous, uh, absolutely joyous scene. Uh, and of course, there was a contrast with that at, uh, at Wembley but for, for a very long time it went absolutely swimmingly well um, you took a, a two goal lead uh, David Ford scored the other goal David Ford um, you know your, your, your teammate and pal and I know we've spoken about this he lives all oh, not 500 yards from where I'm talking to you now He's just up the road. He looks just as fit as you do um, at the young age of, what are you, early 70s. Yeah. I'm being generous there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Obviously, David Ford did a big part to play uh, while I was at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, David was a, a lovely guy, great footballer, and uh, I like David's company. Um, and... Uh, he scored the other goal at Wembley. But the, the one thing about the, the team at Wembley, Alan, we were such a young side. Um, you know, Everton were the Bank of England club then. The, the Moores family who ran the, the, the Pools and Littlewoods and Vernons and all these big businesses, they were back in Everton. And, and they, could, um, they could pay out for big, um, big players. And when you look at Sheffield Wednesday, the, the, the only payment that was paid out, I think, was about uh, 10000 for Ron Springer from Queen's Park Rangers and 37500 for myself. Whereas Everton, the full payout for them was about £440,000. Quite a difference, Alan. Uh, but even though we were young, um, I thought for an hour... We had the game. Uh, we had the game. We were playing very, very well, and then all of a sudden we got rattled with two goals from Mike uh, Mike Tobilko, 
Um, that set us back and we didn't seem to get back into the game. And of course, they got the winner. Um, and although we tried hard, it just wasn't going to happen. And, and that, that was the way it was. Uh, we lost 3-2 at, at Wembley. Yeah, nobody had heard of Mike Trebilko before that game, but he, he bounced onto the scene and not, not too much was heard of him afterwards, really. But it, that was his glory day, wasn't it? Yeah, and Derek was one song. Yeah, Derek Temp Temple scored the winner. It was a very unfortunate error from the late uh, Jerry, Jerry Young, who was a, a tremendous footballer and he didn't deserve, you know, to be remembered for that moment because there were very many good moments. What a hard man uh, Jerry, Jerry Young was, probably in the days when uh, defenders and midfield players were allowed to tackle. <laughs> yeah, we, we used to call Jerry, God rest his soul, we used to call him the claw. Because, because you could you could never get past him if if you you looked like getting past him he would claw you back. But <laughs> Jerry Jerry was a tremendous professional. He was probably that season our best player consistently, and and it was such a tragedy for it uh, for him to miscontrol the ball and and run through and and for for uh, Derek Temple uh, to score past Ron Springer. But I thought Ron was absolutely brilliant because Ron came straight out of his goal and lifted Jerry up. And that, that, that's the type of guys that they, they were, Jerry and, and Ron Springer. Wonderful human beings besides being great footballers. That is terrific to hear, really heartening. Despite the fact that one of your messages to me when we spoke on the phone setting up this show was, if you see Fordy, trip him up for me, will you? I haven't, I haven't seen him to trip him up uh, yet, but I, I'll, I'll bear it in mind. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of people tried, but David was so quick, I, I don't think a lot of them managed to do it. No, that's for sure. I mean, I, I, I can remember that far back. I think they described your role as sort of inside forward. Now, there's a, there's a, a sort of old-fashioned term. Tell you what, we've got a few memories uh, on video. If you... If you scour YouTube, it's amazing what you can find. It's there for all time. But there was a first uh, in uh, 1966. Um, obviously, uh, Pathé News used to, for the cinema audience, used to, to make wonderful films for those who watched, uh, you know, uh, films that came out following big events. And Sheffield Wednesday 2, Everton 3 was no exception. What was an exception? The very first time that cameras have been allowed to film in a dressing room pre-match. Now, this, this is a really fascinating watch. In English football, nothing compares with this Wembley Festival climaxing the season, the Cup Final. The superb stadium, capacity filled with 100,000 fans up for the Cup. This occasion has everything. But what of the atmosphere behind the scenes? Pathé made newsreel history by filming inside the dressing rooms before the match. These Everton men, tense, strung up, nervous, only 90 minutes away from victory or defeat. These men are so close to realising every player's ambition, a cup winner's medal. Are they going to win? And for Lebone, a telegram. Good luck to all. Over now to Sheffield Wednesday's dressing room. The same tension, the same big question. Will the cup be theirs? In these shots, we seem to share their feelings. Wembley nerves, the dragging seconds, and that question ticking away endlessly in their heads. Will we win? Ron Springett, an England goalkeeper, knowing he has to be on England form out there. And Wednesday's manager, Alan Brown. Has he picked the right team? He'll soon know. Another dressing room for the referee and the linesman. A few seconds and the man in charge, Jack Taylor of Wolverhampton, will join the procession onto the fateful arena.
that happened, uh, you know, the, the, there's always things that, that pushes the ground, uh, pushes football along, Alan. And this was one of them, uh, that, like you say. But, but, you know, of course, when you're in the dressing room, you're totally focused. Well, you should be. If you're not totally focused, you shouldn't be in that dressing room. Uh, so the cameras were, were just uh, another added um, kind of part of the cup final scene. So it certainly didn't affect me. And uh, I don't know what the other players thought of it, but it, it was part of the, the, the history from then on of, of the FA Cup final, all the pomp and the ceremony. But I think that's why the FA Cup lasted so long, because it was such a... A wonderful tournament. Everybody in the world tuned into it. And uh, it's sad what's been happening to it the last um, X amount of years. Uh, they've devalued the FA Cup, which uh, should never have been uh, let happen because it's uh, it's a wonderful day out for the fans. It's uh, uh, a pleasure for them to go to Wembley and and get a little bit of the bragging rights. Um, and and the, without the fans, they're the lifeblood of football. It, it, as we've seen in the pandemic, when the fans are not in the ground, it's, it's a different game altogether. So it was sad that, you know, the, the fans couldn't, um, couldn't always be um, at the game, but that's the way the pandemic panned out. Well said. It's great to have them back in the stadium now and I uh, couldn't agree more about your words on the uh, the FA Cup as well. Um, great moment for you, though. Uh, tremendous moment. Let's have a look at Jim's goal. It was at Sheffield Wednesday's uh, first goal uh, at Wembley yeah. and this was Jim cracking it in. Sheffield in white. After only four minutes, the final became electric. Jimmy McCallyog in possession. Off an Everton player, he shot, found the net. Goal for Wednesday. Well, that was some finish there, Jim. Yeah, too quick for the camera, Alan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, nowadays you, you want to see it again in slow motion and you want to see it from behind the goal and it's frustrating, yeah. isn't it? I, don't, I, I remember it honestly like it was today. Uh, I'll never forget it. It was a fantastic moment for myself and, uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a memory I'll, I'll never forget. It's a treasured one, obviously, whether you win or lose, but at the time, you know, it would have meant so much more to you uh, with the trophy in your hand as well. Um, I, I noticed the celebration. You did jump for joy, and, and that was about it. The rest, the rest was handshakes as you, as you, as you ran back. Yeah, that, that was the way it was in the day, Alan. If you were a forward, you were expected to score goals. So, you know, that, that was the principle of, of all of it. And, uh, you know, we didn't celebrate like they do today, Good luck to them today. You know, they, this is their era and, and that's the way it goes. But to score at Wembley as a 19-year-old after watching um, all them games myself, the FA Cup final back in Scotland, it, it was a memorable moment for me and my family. And 10 years on, let's come to the Wembley win. We've, we've talked about the Wembley woe and we're going to talk about more about Sheffield Wednesday, the football club, the characters you play with and Sheffield Wednesday now as the programme goes on. But we've got the Wembley woe out of the way. The Wembley win, I mean, it's un uncanny this. Um, 10 years later, you play for Southampton there. Uh, and again, uh, you, you're facing a, a former club, aren't you? At, at Manchester United. Um, and nobody, but nobody expects Southampton to win. Uh, you set up the winner for Bobby Stokes. Talk us a little bit about that great day. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite a final because obviously uh, Man United, uh, who I'd just left 18 months previously, 
They they were warm favourites, big favourites uh, to win. They had a fantastic uh, season, the first season back in the first division from the from when they got relegated. And and at one bit it looked like they could win the the first division title at the first time of asking. Um, but it was a uh, it was a game where I remember the shoot magazine actually got in touch with twenty people, uh, twenty players from the first division and the second division, and the 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 out of the twenty players, there were two players that actually said. That, that we would win Southampton. And believe it or not, it was two Peters. One was Peter Lorimer, who sadly passed away uh, um, a, a while ago. Peter Lorimer said that he fancied uh, Southampton because we had experienced players in Peter Osgood, uh, Mickey Shannon and, and myself, and he thought there would be an upset. And the other guy that backed us was Peter Houseman who used to be a teammate of mine at Chelsea. And Peter said that he thought that, that we were good outsiders and that we would win. But the rest of them, they all put on Manchester United. And I remember watching Jackie Charlton on the television, and I think he actually said it would be 4-1 to Man United. He didn't give us a cat in hell's chance. So, you know, that was the, the, the way it was. But... For Southampton, we were obviously worried about United because they, they, they were a very fit side. But the thing was, we had players who could keep the ball. So that was our plan, to, to keep them out the first 20 minutes of each half and, and then try and get hold of the ball and keep the ball away from them. So yeah. I think it worked to, to quite a, an extent. And... Uh, the, the, the goal came about from a, a pass from Mickey Shannon to myself. And I could see Bobby, uh, Bobby Stokes in the left-hand side channel. And I knocked the ball over the defence and into Bobby's path. And Bobby's hit it very quickly. And I think he's caught Alex Stepney on the hop a little bit. Um, so that was a wonderful goal. It was a wonderful day for Southampton fans. Like I said, it's a day out for the fans. It's a, a thank you to the fans. And I, none of them will ever forget that day, including myself. And, and sadly, Bobby, uh, Bobby has passed away. But, but it was great for a local boy from Portsmouth to score the winning goal at Wembley in an FA Cup final. Well said. Long live the FA Cup, I think is the message uh, from Jim McCallioggan, quite rightly so. In part one, we've got so much more uh, to, uh, to discuss with Jim, uh, not least uh, playing for uh, Scotland and scoring a, an historic goal. We go back to 1966 for that. We'll be talking further about Sheffield Wednesday then and Sheffield Wednesday now. And I'm delighted to say that in part two, James Gregg will join us to talk about what has become now uh, I'm not going to use the words post-pandemic, but we're kind of returning to normal. What's become, thankfully, a very busy sporting scene. Jim, if you could stay right there, and if you could stay right there, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. 